come here to New Zealand in 2017 to do my PhD and I'm in University of Canterbury and since then I've been studying the post-fire vegetation recovery on the Port Hills and it has been a great experience to be here in New Zealand learning from you New Zealanders how you restore the vegetation, how you restore your ecosystem, how the community get involved. It has been a great experience for me. And today my presentation, uh, what I will talk about is part of my thesis research. So, I will first talk briefly about the Port Hills fire, then I will talk about these plant resprouting capacity after the fire and finally I'll talk about some implications for restoration. So the Port Hills fire occurred here uh, in the interface of Christchurch, Hilburn, rural area. Uh, it was in February 2017. It was a uh, tragic fire, houses were burned, many people were evacuated from their houses and this fire burned approximately uh, 1,500 uh, 1, hectares. I have here a map from this area uh, affected by the fire before the fire and just to illustrate here, inside the red polygon is the area after <coughs> burning. So based on these images, I classified the images and I've got like these numbers here that most of the area burned was pine plantation followed by exotic shrubland, followed by pasture land and finally by native vegetation in different regeneration stages and the focus of my study is in this native vegetation patches that were burned during the fire. So one of the questions that guided this part of my research uh, was which species are capable of surviving after a wildfire? which native species will re-sprout after this fire. And this is an important <coughs> subject considering that fires uh, are predicted to be more frequent and more severe <coughs> with climate change. And thinking about which species are capable of persisting after the fire could be strategic for planning restoration and conservation actions. And while this subject is well documented in fire-prone regions <coughs> such as savannas and some temperate forests in the North Hemisphere, um, in non-fire-prone ecosystems such, such as New Zealand forests and uh, Patagonian forests on South America and also some tropical forests, in these non-fire-prone regions, this information is still scarce. So, aiming to contribute and generate some information on resprouting in the native flora here in New Zealand, I established a trial on the Port Hills soon after the fire. So I established 10 plots there, and inside these plots, I register all the burned trees and I observed them uh, uh, five months after the fire and ten months after the fire and I checked every sign of re-sprout, counted those re-sprouts and classified them whether they re-sprout from the base or from the branches and um, I identified the species based on crown architecture and bark features and this is the map with the location of my plots up on the hills. Here is the Kennedy's Bush Reserve, here is Ohinitahi Reserve, Mount Ada, 
just to give an idea for those who knows the area. So as a result, I've got a list of the most abundant species that I registered in this area. And as you, as you can see, the resprouting response was quite variable. Like the green color here represents the number of individuals that were capable of resprouting after the fire, and the gray, the gray color represents the non-resprouters. And then um, the most abundant species that I registered there by far was Mahoy, which luckily was a great resprouter. So the area is recovering. Uh, we could say the area is recovering well. After five months, 17% of the vegetation had already resprouted, and after 10 months, this number rose to 38%. I identified 24 species there and classified these most common species as strong resprouters when they sprouted more than 70%, intermediate resprouters, and non resprouters when they resprouted less than 30%. So the intermediate and strong resprouters are highlighted here in green. And this, the majority of the native species wasn't capable of resprouting. And this was uh, expected in some way because the flora, the native flora here, evolved in an environment uh, with naturally low fire frequency. But even lacking on this fire adaptation, uh, some native plants were capable of resprouting, and even that this is not a consequence of fire adaptation, it will confer some advantage to these plants in the post-fire recovery process. So in an environment like on the Port Hills, where wood species are quite abundant, this uh, resprouting will be an advantage in the recovery process. Just to, just to illustrate here, you can see how gorse regenerated widespread here, but the sprout of mahoy usually resprouts go, grow faster than seedlings, so the resprout was already able to overcome the dense layer of gorse. So because resprouters will persist after the fire, they are likely to require less active management after fire. And then uh, bringing this to, the re to a restoration perspective, uh, the message that I bring here today uh, with this presentation is that maybe by planting higher proportions of resprouting plants, <coughs> it's possible to engineer more fire resilient uh, restoration plantings, and this is important uh, for areas more susceptible to fire. In a urban context, we can mention that this interface of urban area and wildland, or urban area and rural area, as areas susceptible to fire events. Thank you.